Let's get up for the Lord. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your good and your mercies. They endure. Thank you because there's power in the name of Jesus. Thank you because chains are falling. Thank you because strongholds of the mind, limitations are gone as we praise you, as we worship you, as we fellowship with the word. We are changed. We are transformed. Something has happened to our minds. We see through your lenses. Thank you, God, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, you could have your seat if you can. Welcome to service. I welcome those who are joining us online, also via Instagram at Revealing Christ Mission. God bless you. Thank you for spending this time with us. And those that are here physically, thank you for spending the time to make your way to number three, Iwaya Road, Onike Yaba to do this physically. God bless you. As we get into God's word right now, I ask that God will breathe upon his word to profit us all in multiple folds. 30, 60, 100, we are doers of God's word to fall upon the good soil of our heart. God will speak through my lips. Answers will come for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we start a fresh series, a teaching series today, a series on prayer, 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 prayer. Prayer, prayer. Eh? It's, 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 it's a topic that cannot be exhausted because um, if you see a prayerless Christian, then you also see a Christian who does not understand the, the, the things that have been given to him or her because it's true prayer that we make a conversion. We make a conversion from the spirit realm into the physical realm, that's how we get things into our soul. It's how we get the flesh to die. So, um, everyone prays, actually. But the object of worship is what differs from person to person. Every man on earth prays to something or to someone. Uh, man in his existence will always come to that point where he knows that there's a void and if you go back in history, you will see that man will always come to a point where he meets something that he does not understand, you know, uh, or something that he cannot control. Suddenly, rain starts to fall, and he knows that he was not the one that pressed the button. So, you know, something caused rain to fall. He woke up the next morning, and then the sun shines. And at a particular time, the sun also goes down. So, there are certain things that are outside of his control that wants him to, that starts to lure him into a place where he must believe a greater force. Amen. Yes. Things happen on the outside and he doesn't understand. And he's saying there must be something extra about this, my existence. So at times when they didn't even know God, they'll probably create um, graven images, create something, you know, something happens on the outside, you know, and the person just makes a, makes a religion out of it. It's like saying you woke up on a Monday morning and then as you were going, somebody slapped you. And then by the evening of that day, something beautiful had happened to you that particular day. Then again, Wednesday, something happened again. Somebody slapped you again. By the evening of that day, something good and something that you couldn't explain has happened on that day. By Friday, a similar thing happens as your girl's going mistakenly, somebody slapped you again. So by the evening of that day, something, suddenly, you know what happens? You make a religion out of the slap. So, and that's the, that's the history, really. If you really check how people came into what they believe, something will happen and then they find a way of balancing it. Okay, so it may be this that is causing this to happen. But you know, we've looked at it and we have seen that the principles that will guide prayer cannot be determined by the person who is praying. It's the person who is receiving the prayer that determines how they want to be related to, how you should worship them. And that's why in, in, in other religions, and even in Christianity, you will find, but it's not in the same way, you know, you find the priest of a particular shrine or something, and the priest speaks on behalf of that demigod to say what the requirements of worship are. So you can't just come anyhow. So 
the truth of the matter is we know that there's only one God. And he's the God of the universe, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But we're saying that man, man will always want to look for something, something higher than himself. Something that can give him some form of uh, meaning in life to the things that he cannot explain. So that's what has led to, there's a void in man that must be filled. And that void can only be filled by God. So even when people try to use other means to fill that void, it never really brings them to a place of satisfaction. It never really gets their issues solved in that sense. It doesn't give them eternal relevance. So the truth is man will search and there have been different con contests down the line in history. We find it even in the Bible where there have been contests about who is the greater. So God is not just God because he forced himself on us. You don't, you don't get my point. God is not just God because he forced himself like, I'm um, God, you must respect me. No, he has also proven himself. He didn't need to because his God is all sufficient. He didn't, he didn't, God didn't need to prove himself in any way to man so that you would regard him as God. He's God. Amen. But we see it in the Bible that there have been different cases where God had to display his power to show his supremacy, to also show his sovereignty to man. Look at the case of Israel in Egypt. The magicians of Pharaoh, they tr threw down their snakes. They, their rods became snake too. Moses did the same thing. On the outside, it looked alike. But as we started looking, then we saw that one snake was swallowing the others until there was only one snake left. Who won that contest? Moses' rod. And that represented God. Moses was a representative of God. Amen. We, we see that down. So he didn't need to prove himself. He only did it for man's sake. So that at least the children of Israel would come to a place where they believed that, oh, this is the same God that spoke to our fathers. So there had to be that combat. We saw that also with Elijah and the prophets of Baal. An interesting story. On this particular day, Elijah went to meet Ahab. Ahab referred to him as the troublemaker of Israel, which he was not. It was Ahab and his family that were the trouble of Israel in that season. And then Elijah said, summon all of Israel. Let them come to the mountain. Let them choose this day who their God is, if it is going to be Baal or it's going to be God. Amen. And they got up on the mountain and then Elijah decided to put a criteria that was difficult to meet except by a miracle. He put up a criteria. He said, let them bring two bulls. And they brought them. We're going somewhere. This is prayer because we have to first understand the one who we pray to and the fact that he is not trying to lord himself on us. He has given man free will but in history, he has proven himself to be God. Amen. He said, the, the, he said they should bring two, two bulls. One for the prophets of Baal, 450 of them, and another one for him. He said, at that point, Elijah thought he was the only prophet left. But he was not. And everything that happened in this particular scenario, I'm saying, we can find it in 1 Kings chapter 18. And... He was instructed by God to do that. They got on the mountain, and then he told the prophets about to go first. So chop the bulls and put them on the altar. Do your own altar. The God that answers by fire, let him be God. So they put everything there, put the wood, put everything there, and they started from early in the morning started doing their chants, doing all they know to do. I don't know if Baal has answered them before, ever. Because for them to have put in a type of ceremony, there might have been cases where Baal had answered them. But suddenly, Baal became mute in the presence of Jehovah. 
Amen. So I don't know what has been talking to you. But in the presence of God, that voice is silenced in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because for them to have been so sure that something was going to happen, they were doing all their dances, doing everything, and going around the thing. You can imagine the kind of scenario. And by noon, <laughs> Elijah is a funny man. <laughs> then he came out and said, maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he's on leave. Maybe he took a walk. Maybe you should shout more so that he can hear. <laughs> and then they shouted more. Like, ah, today is today. And then they started cutting themselves. So that Bao can know how desperate they are for him to, or for it to respond. It can't be him. For it to respond. <laughs> Amen. They cut themselves. Blood started gushing out. Just to show their seriousness. When it was almost evening, towards the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah said, you have tried. This is almost 12 hours now. Yeah. Your, 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 your God must be really slow. <laughs> and Elijah worsened the requirements. He made a trench that could take gallons of water and said, pour water on this sacrifice. The poured. I think it was there. He said, pour again. They did it the second time. He said, do it the third time. And then Elijah went before the sacrifice and said, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, let it be known today that you are the one who sent me. I am your servant. And what happened? Fire came down from heaven and licked everything plus the stone. Plus the stone. See, if fire leaks water, nice. But when fire burns stone, then you know that <laughs> hell is real. <laughs> and Elijah, we saw that in that contest, Jehovah won again. Even though he didn't need to prove himself, he did it for the sake of man. Hallelujah. Another, uh, another scenario, the God, the God of the Philistines, one of them, Dagon or Dagon. After they captured, they took the Ark of Covenant and they put it in the same room with Dagon. They went. They came back the next morning. They saw that Dagon had bowed before the Ark of Covenant. <laughs> It was on the floor. <laughs> they said, maybe it's, a, maybe, maybe it's wind that blew it. They arranged it in back. They went. The next morning, they saw that they gone and bowed again. <laughs> they said, maybe it's a mistake. They put it, they took the, 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 the third day they came, the hand was out, the leg was out, everything was out. Another contest. They said, no, we can't have this here. We can't have this here. They gone bowed. To our God. Amen. Even though God didn't need to prove himself, there was absolutely no need from our human standpoint, but he did it for us. God in time displayed his CV so that when you are in a situation, you can have something to look at. Everything happened for our sake. Let's look at another one. Fire bowed to God. Nebuchadnezzar said, and they put out a law that, any, that when they make the sound and the, music and, and the musical instrument starts to play, everyone should bow. There were these three guys. They decided that they were not going to bow. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They decided they were not going to bow. So the king, they reported them because it was all planned. It was a political move. They reported them that these guys, they did not bow when they heard the sound. And they got in front of the king. And unlike most of us, they were not jittering. They were not stammering. They were very bold. 
So even though they respected the king, they said, king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. In every other thing, we can be calm. But when it comes to our God, we're not going to shake. We're not going to move. Say, our God is going to deliver us. In that same breath, they thought about it. That what if he doesn't? Like, he has nothing to prove. Either he delivers us or not. He's still God. But we're not still going to bow. Nebuchadnezzar was angry. Like, what? What do you mean? Make the fire seven times utter. And put them in it. The fire was so hot that the soldiers that took them in got burnt. The soldiers got burnt. But as he entered, Nebuchadnezzar peeped to see what was happening. There was the fourth man in the fire. Fourth man in the fire. And what was supposed to destroy them now became their playground. They were there and they were wondering. And Nebuchadnezzar by himself said, we threw three people in here, but we are seeing four. And the fourth one has a resemblance of a god. And he said, let them come out. He called on to them. He said, come, 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 come. Fire bowed. Nature bowed. That's the God who receives our prayers. Amen. 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 Lions also disobeyed their natural instinct. Lions are, are what? Carnivores. Have we? Uh-huh. My children know more. About all these things like that. Nigel Wild. And Lion saw Daniel. Daniel entered into the den. But instead of seeing Daniel as lunch, the lions, because of the presence of Jehovah, the one who made them, they became like pet dogs, like Lassa. You can imagine. Lions in their might and all that. And they became Daniel's friend inside of that place. What did the lions see? It was the presence of Jehovah. But don't forget, Daniel was a praying man. And the reason why they threw Daniel into the lions then was because he was praying. No one that the Bible says that power is released when the righteous prays. Power is released when the righteous prays. So in the moments of the prayer of Daniel, something had happened in the atmosphere that lions even respected it. Praise God. Nature stood still. The sun stood still during the battle of Joshua. Amen. Stood still for them to finish the fight. Why why could that happen? Because the one who we pray to is the one who made the heavens and the earth. He spoke the sun to be. He spoke the, the moon. Say you rule by day. He spoke to the moon. Say you rule by night. And the day one of his children needed for the sun to stand still, say stay for a bit longer. So, what am I saying? What I'm doing in essence is to let you know that God deliberately rolled out a CV in the scripture so that you will not be in doubt of his might. You will not be in doubt of his ability concerning anything you might be going through. And everything that I have mentioned right now, and God did it in a way that what he made happen in the history and in the Bible that we read He made it in a grand way that it will be more than anything you will face. You are not in the lion's den. You are presently fighting no battle with sword or with gun. Amen. Amen. You are not facing any prophet of Baal. Amen. You are not faced with Jezebel. Amen. Amen. So God made sure that the instances in the scripture were, 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 they felt exaggerated. 
that the Red Sea parted. They all felt exaggerated. But guess what? God did that so that something will happen to you when you read the Bible and you consider your situation and you put it side by side. You know that this is, this is nothing to write home about. Can somebody get excited that what you are going through is, is, is not a big deal? Say it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Have you seen the size of a lion before? I've seen on TV. And I see it beside the human being that is beside, and I, and I know that we don't joke here. Even the size of some dogs, you know, you tell the owner to hold it first while you're coming. Uh, even if they say, ah, it's a friendly dog, it's, a friend, it's just a pet, it's a pet, it's your pet. <laughs> we're, not, we're not going to do that here. There's a dog in our compound like that, our neighbor's dog. Me and my wife were coming home that day. We just saw from the, we just shouted, oh, last you, oh, last you. <laughs> so the owner had to hold the dog like this for a hand. And that's a dog. Now imagine a lion. In short, you can imagine that if you were the one, as they dropped him, before he landed, he was already dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> life and When you watch cartoon, you know how the person's spirit will be running and then the body will catch up. <laughs> Our God is mighty. Our God is mighty. There's no other religion that has been able to raise a man from the dead without the will of another man. Who prayed Jesus out? Amen. Amen. The power of God got in full display. Jesus was in the grave. Nobody commanded his body. And he came out. Alive. So alive that the mark of the nail was still there. He showed Thomas, say, it's still here. It's not that they did make up for me when I came out. <laughs> Amen. Our God is good. He rose from the dead. And anything that has died in your life that needs to rise in this season, by the resurrection power, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, Anything that is dead in your life, that needs to come alive, comes alive. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your business comes alive. Amen. Your family comes alive. Amen. New wine is poured out. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your relationships come alive. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. In all of this, let's not forget. God didn't need to prove a point. He did it for my sake. Say, he did it for my sake. So, what's prayer? Prayer is simply communication between man and God. Let's say that together. Prayer is what? Communication between man and God. I know that we have made it complex and we have complicated it. But it is simply what? Communication. And we know that... We all have unwritten codes of how we want people to communicate with us. You want people to respect you, don't you? You want, people to, you want to be celebrated, don't you? God also has his own written codes. His own is even written of how he wants us to approach him. Amen. How he wants us to pet petition him. So we already know who we're supposed to pray to. Who are, who, who are we supposed to pray to? God. So it's the lesser that prays to the higher you, know, you get what I'm saying? Because the word prayer is also a legal word, petition. So you petition the court. You petition the judge. Amen. So the same way we, are, we pray to God, you don't pray to things. Amen. Don't, don't, see, don't let things become why you exist. Come to a place where no matter what you have in possession, if God says you should release it, you can release it. Always ask yourself that thing consistently. 
that, can I let this thing go? Can I let this thing go? That one that you will say, mm, I cannot let this thing go. That thing is an idol. So it's always better to quickly come to that place where you can let anything go. Or else God will soon come to tell you to let it go. And at that time, it will be paining you gone. Amen. The psalmist says in Psalm 5, verse 3, he says, My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. So he's saying that I will pray, and when I pray, I will not look down. What does that mean? It's not talking about a physical position. It means that I will pray and also believe that my answer will come from you. I will pray and also believe that you determine how the prayer will be answered. I will pray and also accept your verdict as the final. I will pray and also accept that if it's a no, it's a no because you said it's a no. And if it's a yes, I will accept that it's a yes. And I will also accept that you know the best. So David didn't just say I will pray. He says I will pray, but I will also look up. I will not look to man. So you don't pray and start to find the answers in men. Mm -mm. Let God decide how the prayer will manifest. We are not saying he will not use men, but you will not choose the men he will use. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because sometimes we already have it figured out. So you only prayed just to mark register. You had already determined what you were going to do. Like I was listening to a sermon by David Digger today. He said, when you do something wrong and you pray to God for forgiveness, do you pray for forgiveness so that you can be delivered from the guilt? Or you pray for forgiveness because you want to repent and not do that thing again? <laughs> you know, there are two different things. You can pray so that the guilt that you are feeling can leave. But you did not make a decision if you are going to stop doing that thing. You have been taught to move on quick. So, but you're moving on. You are still seeing that thing in the future that it will happen. But you are saying the blood is available. So, you didn't repent. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, we petition God. So, the question will now be, do I need to pray? And we all know the answer. The answer is a yes. So, let's look at why we need to pray. Because if you consistently put before your eyes... The benefits of prayer, why you need to pray, then it probably will become something that you will enjoy doing. And the reason why people don't enjoy praying is because religion has painted prayer in a particular way. And you'll be delivered from religion today in the name of Jesus. Concerning prayer, concerning prayer, you will be what? Delivered. Proverbs 15, verse 8, the New Living Translation. It says, The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked. But he delights in the what? The prayers of the upright. Who is the righteousness of God here? Hallelujah. So the moment you start praying, guess what God is doing? God is excited. You can see him smiling. That's what the Bible says. He delights. What does it mean for somebody to delight in something? The person is happy. Sometimes we have painted God to be a God without emotions. And we have painted the word emotion to look like something that is not good. God has emotions, though. He can be happy and he can be sad. The Bible told us that. It's not my opinion. If you've read in places where the Bible says God was angry, is anger not an emotion? And you've heard the place where, where the Bible says that, and God was pleased with this person's request. Is that not an emotion? Which means that a person can do something and God is excited. Praise God. So when the righteous starts to pray, God is delighted. So the next time you pray, remember that God is happy that you are praying. He's smiling. He's not counting that when you come. Because sometimes people come into prayer and they're already looking, when last did I pray? God is not thinking about when last you prayed. He is caught in the moment that you are praying. Glory to God. Most people have that kind of mindset. Ah, it was two weeks ago I prayed. So the first 
15 minutes of their prayer, they are still wallowing in the fact that they have not prayed and they think they have started praying. Amen. Most people even think a lot about the fact that they've not prayed. So much that they don't even pray. <laughs> they stay in there just thinking, ah, one week, I've not even read my Bible. And that's the thought. What does it take you in that moment to read your Bible? What does it take you in that moment to say, thank you, Jesus? There's life in me. I can talk to you now. And you start to pray. But most people will just keep thinking about it. Be, ha! And they'll start beating themselves inside their heart. And I'm the choir leader. <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> they first start to go to the status of their life and their social relevance and forget that they are children of God. People don't grow that way. Amen. So let's look at some of the reasons why we should pray. First, we have seen that one, that God delights in the prayer of the righteous. The other thing you need to know tied to that is that the spirit realm controls the physical realm. Say that with me. The spirit realm controls the physical realm. Amen. And, and we connect and take control of the physical realm through prayer. We take control. We take sides with God when we pray. There are times that God wants to tell you something and he's waiting for you to pray so that he can tell you. So always see the place of prayer as an interesting place to you. You don't know how much I get excited when God gives me a word. Like, woo! Doubt leaves. I have direction now. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. He has spoken. So I go into the place of prayer not to tick register, but to have an encounter. I want to hear what he is saying now, not what he said yesterday. What he said yesterday was go and kill Isaac. What he's saying today is now don't. There's a lamb that has been provided. So if you live in the past, you can disobey God in the present. Amen. Hebrews 11.3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things that are seen were made from things that do not appear. Means that the things that are in the spirit are the raw materials or the capital of the things that we see. Amen. So when we pray like that, we take sides with God on any matter. And we get his verdict on the matter. And we go into life with that verdict that God has said this was going to happen. So even when there are storms, you'll be sleeping. Because Jesus has said, let's go to the other side. That's what the disciples didn't know at that time. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. But the fact that God told you to go somewhere doesn't mean that there won't be storms. And most people think that any time God has spoken, that it will just be auto cruise. We're just cruising on the word of God. Just cruising. The storm, ah. That word is assurance. There will be persecution for the word's sake. That the moment God gives you a word, guess what? A fight has started. It's like hell will break loose to make sure that war is not against you. It's against the word. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, some, they will give them the word. And then the birds of the air came to pick it. What does the birds of the air represent demons. So God gives you a word and the devil will bring distraction so that you don't remember the word that he gave you. He will put things in place quickly because even the devil knows that the word cannot fail. So his war is not against you. His war is to make sure that he takes out the word so that you are not conscious of what he has told you, what God has told you, so that you look at the mirror and you forget how you look. Because what the word does is to show you you. So God sees who you can be, not who you are. So in the moment of prayer, God paints a picture and says, see, this was supposed to happen. And as you turn back, the devil does many things to make sure that things that look contrary to that which God has said starts to occur. Is that place that most people get distracted. You say, but I thought I heard God. I thought I heard God. I thought I heard God. 
I thought I heard God, but why is it going like this? And then they start to get discouraged, not knowing that what they are going through came because of the word that they had received. There must be a test for the word. The moment God tells you something, no, and that the devil is not going to take it easy. So you are set. The Bible says we are not ignorant of the vices of the enemy. We're go- that's, that's the same one for another time. We're going to look at the, the, so that when, see, even if, which is not even your case, because Jesus said that my sheep hear it, my voice. Amen. But sometimes you can hear God by elimination method. Which means that if the devil comes to tell you, you are not blessed. What's the real, 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 real truth? Is that you are what? You are blessed in hand. So at least you know. Because the devil will lie. Amen. He can't say the truth. It's not in his nature. He can't, he can't, even if he's trying, it's still a lie that will come out. Amen. So the spiritual realm controls the physical realm. I remember when I was in school, That God gave me an instruction, have a meeting in your class. He gave me time, Wednesday, 10 a.m. It was on a Saturday. It was during the choir. We were praying in the spirit like that. I just it was like a flash. And I saw the scripture that I was supposed to preach. I didn't, ah, it was a strange thing. So I called three of my friends, or four of them. It was three of them. I said, please, let's pray and fast. So we put it on the notice board, created uh, by the department. We didn't even think, would there be class? Would there be no class? We were just just following. We didn't even bother. That was really, I I think, think, why won't I even consider if there would be class at that time? So we started praying. We had a fast for three days from, I think, from Monday. Wednesday was the day itself. Then we came into class. And then we said, oh, if you are not here for the meeting, please go out. And everybody sat down. They did not go out. So I, I, so I started preaching. Everything I wanted to preach a night before I had written it inside my diary. So I was preaching like this. I would look up. Wait, let me look up. And then after all that, I gave altar call. And 13 people gave their lives to Christ. Inside Creative Art. Ah, that's, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Amen. But later on, I found out something to tell us that the spirit realm controls the physical. There was a class for 10 a.m. inside that place. The lecturer didn't know why he couldn't leave his office. Yes, he just sat down in his office. He was around. But he just didn't know why he, didn't leave. he couldn't leave his office. It was later, later on I found out he was just saying it, and you know, the thing just, ah, I said, this was the same day, oh. and he was just in his office. So something had happened as we prayed. Even though we were oblivious of the fact that there was going to be class that day, but God has given instruction. The God of the Bible, amen. 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 Another one happened, we had a class presentation in school, and the first person had done his presentation, second person, and it was not going well. It was looking like, ah. If this thing is going like this, people will fail. <laughs> and we had even tried to tell the lecturer that, please, can we restart the, pre- uh, the presentation? The man said, no, no. We all left. We didn't say anything. Apparently, everybody went home to go and pray. We all, we all went to pray. By the next class, the man by himself came. We're going to restart the presentation. Uh, <laughs> Amen. 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 God answers prayers. He answers prayers. The second thing that you need to know is that your assignment on the earth is supernatural. You cannot make it come to pass by your own will. What God has sent you to do on the earth is supernatural. Jesus prayed in order to fulfill his purpose. Jesus is the son of God. If Jesus needed to pray, do you think you need to pray? No, maybe not. You know he has paid the price for you. <laughs> Amen. Maybe all you need to do is just receive that which he has done. Abby? No. Jesus came to show us an example. He came as 
divinity and as also humanity. And he showed us that he was a man who was anointed by the Holy Ghost. And I checked scripture and I saw the habit of Jesus when it comes to, the th when it comes to praying. The day Jesus picked the disciples, when he started picking them, he was coming from a place of prayer. And he saw Peter. Say this one. This one, this one, this one. How did he know? He had downloaded something in the place of prayer. How did he know? There was something about his prayer habit. And let's not put it in a religious... It was not about just the motion of an activity. It was, a, it was communication between man and God. Amen. Is our perfect example. Let's go to James 5, verse 16. In the later part, it says that the earnest heart felt continued. Hey! That's the part we don't like. You know, we like pray once. And then that's it, Abby. It says, the heart felt continued prayer of the righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. I think that's the missing link. Most times we start praying. But we stop. In short, most times we stop when we start to see encouraging signs on the outside. So when it's looking like, ah, God is answering you. Uh -huh. So you just, you now calm down. You don't know that the process that brought you to a place of success is still what's going to maintain that success and grow it. So the word that you were speaking that got you into that place where you got that job is still that same word that you were staying in until God gives you another one as a top in uh, or, or what, what do they call it now? A top up. It will top it up and give you another word that gets you energized again. Then you take that word. So we cannot but pray. Without it, you cannot fulfill your divine destiny on the earth. In Matthew 14, 23, it says, After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Night did what? I don't know what the content of Jesus' prayer was that made it so much like you were at the movies. And time was going, and he was enjoying it. There must be something about prayer that we have not been told about. That made night fall. You know, it's when you are with friends that it happens like that. Are you getting it? If you look at the parallel in the natural world, you'll be just with your friend, and then, ah! It's 10 p.m. I have to go home. But guess what? We have painted prayer in a way that ah. In short, if you have not, if you are not frowning, you have not started. If you are not frowning, you have not started though. Ah, you have not hugged a pool. And you are doing like this. Ah. You have not started. You are still. You go to prayer meetings where people are sitting down to pray, and they're like, pray. <laughs> like, so this is prayer that you are doing. You are sitting, you are just, ah-ah. Uh -uh. The problem that is doing you is not big enough yet. Ah-ah. <laughs> uh <-uh. laughs> God. <laughs> that if it was big enough, you would not be praying the way you are praying. No. <laughs> let's, 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 let's not be religious about this thing. There will be moments nobody will tell you when that kind of prayer is necessary. It was the same Jesus who went to Gethsemane and he prayed so much, the sweat was blood. It was the same Jesus. So there will be different types of prayers. There are times that you are at the edge of a breakthrough that it is traveling prayer. And you too, you will know it. 
that you will come into a place of prayer and all you're doing is, mm, mm, mm. nobody's telling you. You will know. That's why when you come to service sometimes, some people can be like that and you are sitting down. Let nobody judge each other. We are different places. Amen. Let the person that is doing like this not think this people are not even serious. <laughs> They don't even love God enough. See, see how they are praying. <laughs> These are things in the heart that people don't see. And when next year, yeah, this church are just buttered, buttered people. They don't know. You come for a night of four hours prayer. You'll be standing. We don't even sit down. <laughs> if you sit down, they will tap you. Say, brother, you came to pray. Stand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. 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 Am I saying that those things are wrong? No. no. I'm saying that that's not the only time. You will know. Nobody will tell you when you need to wake up in the middle of the night to pray. That's right. You will know that this one, I have to be alone. If the only time you pray is when you are with other people, then you have to know that you have to add that alone one to, to it. Amen. Amen. Because this one told us, the Bible told us here, that Jesus did what? He went alone. He had disciples who, that would have. And see, sometimes our friends too have to be sensitive, and we as friends too have to be sensitive when our friends need alone prayer. Your friend can call you into a prayer meeting and you hear what the person wants to pray about and you tell the person, I'm not going to be around. Because you sense that this prayer is not, it's not a family meeting. It's a private discussion. Amen. Amen. Some prayers will not be effective when some you have to, but you have to be able to discern. It's not a rule. So Jesus, this one, Jesus went by himself. So a father can call a meeting to speak to family members, to speak to all his children, but he can also call for a private meeting. So you have to be able to discern. I and my wife, we have times when we pray together, but it's not a lot of times. Amen. Amen. Because our timing in life is even different. We wake up at different times, and I am not a religious type. Well, when I wake up, family at five, I'll now wake my wife up. So let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't know that she slept at two. Nine. You slept at ten. So even though out of respect, she could probably wake up and join you in her mind. It's like this might take So we have to be able to discern the time thing. I am an early morning person. BG, I don't like BG. That's the truth. Even night session, I don't know. Since I got married, I, if I had a night session, maybe once or twice. And that's in 12 years. And I said, I don't like BG. I've even, I remember one BG like that. Huh? As we were praying, I just found a more comfortable position to just commune with the Lord. And he was not on my knee during the vision. That's how I went deeper. It was, it was in the middle of that deep communication with no words, but probably snow. That, that pastor, pastor needed me to sing. My eyes were red when I woke up. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So please, let's not complicate these things. We'll get into some other things. Let's look at another scripture. Mark 1, verse 35 to 38. It says, before daybreak the next morning. Before daybreak the next morning. It's showing us the, the way Jesus did things. Before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. There must be something about taking away distractions when you want to pray.
That's why, you see, he had disciples. These guys were his guys. But he would want to pray and then he would escape. He said, later, Simon and the others went out to find him. When they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. They, but Jesus replied, we must go on to other towns as well. And I will preach to them too. That is why I came. Where do you think Jesus got that from? When he was praying. He, as he went to pray, the father told him, you are going from here now. You are going to somewhere else. What if he did not pray? I have had moments where God would nudge me to pray. And in prayer, God would tell me something. And I'm like, what if I didn't respond? So I would have missed out on this thing that God just said now. Amen. Amen. So there was the habit of Jesus to pray. So let me, let me quickly say something so that you would not allow religion to pull you again. Prayer is not about the length. Even though length is important. I had asked God once. I said, God, why all the stress about lengthy prayer? Have you asked yourself to before? That why? Why do you? And he said something. He said it's because of details. He said it's because of details. Let me give an example. See, our relationship with God can be typified by the relationship between a man and a woman. Hmm? I have noticed that there are certain times that other conversations come up between me and my wife. When we have been talking for long, or I'm not looking at my phone, she's not looking at her phone, or just gisting, 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 gisting. In the 35th minute, 45th minute, something will just come up. I say, ah, this is the essence of this conversation. It didn't come up in the 15th. It didn't come up in the 30th. It came up later. So sometimes other things come up as you dwell, as you tarry, as you stay. I'm not even talking about the fact that you have something to say. Sometimes you're just quiet. I'm just sitting down. Because there are times in prayer that you don't have anything to say. Yes. You just sit down. But well, you have said, God, this is a time between me and you. And all you are doing is sit down. And as you sit down, sometimes you say, and this is for even people who sing. You know that most people who are in the singing ministry, most of them don't count their singing time as prayer. So they live in the guilt of the fact that they have not said words that don't have tune. <laughs> like, ah, this prayer time now, or for, with all the 45 minutes, is song I use it to sing, go. I've not even started praying. <laughs> what do you think you were doing? All you were doing was putting tune to words. You were speaking, but they had melody. If you don't count that as part of prayer, then what's prayer? Who were you communicating with? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. See, you have to find your pattern. That's really where I'm going to. Some of you can sing two hours. Three hours, you will sing. You will sing it. Why not take it since you are comfortable your soul is comfortable with that. Sing your prayers. Three hours with there. Be singing it because you have been struggling with three hours prayer in words. You have been struggling. Before you know, you are, you are already yawning. And you are not feeling sleepy. As they put Netflix like this, your eyes are opened. <laughs> you are there. The series is going. Finish. Let's watch one more episode. Let's watch one more episode. And it will be time to pray. Don't, don't you see? That one demon is frying a cara on your behalf. <laughs> because the devil knows that if you pray, an encounter, something will come out of it. So he will give you good things that can distract you. And if you are not disciplined enough to say, Holy Spirit, help me. You'll be feeling like it. You'll be, as you are, this Bible app, oh, Bible app. But beside it is another app. You, your intention was to, as you opened your phone, was to go to Bible app. Well, just let me quickly check. Facebook. Oh, one hour has gone. Then you're on Instagram. What are you doing? Checking people's pictures. One after the other. So in, as far as you're concerned, you feel like you're updating yourself. Abby? 
you are updating, you are updating, you are getting updated. So you, you feel like you are part of people's life. I, I've not seen that for one year, but I, I, I have been seen online. Check it well. <laughs> Let me not say what I want to say. But go and, go and sink it properly. And see that some of the times that you felt that you didn't have enough time to pray, it was because you didn't create the time to pray. You didn't put it as priority. See, if you have, and I'm talking to myself too, if you put it that nine o'clock we are supposed to pray, if any other thing comes at that night, you say the thing should wait. When I'm done, Jesus will escape. Don't forget. Was it that he couldn't have been doing something else? In short, he was sometimes in the middle of crusades though. They'll be there. The people will be touching him. They'll be healed. Before you know it, he'll probably just position. I can imagine how Jesus would do it. Just say, Peter, stay here, stay here, stay here. They will not know. I got cut out. It's <laughs> 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 a cut out. <laughs> Jesus will cut out to pray. You two have to cut out to pray. Amen. Sometimes when your friends come to the house, we have been talking to one, two, 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 three hours. Can we pray in the spirit for another 30 minutes before you go home? But it depends on the kind of friends you are. If you say, if you say somebody is your friend, then they know. Then then it means that they know you. Amen. Amen. So after gisting, after watching that nice movie that you guys went to watch, I shall come in down like this. Can we pray in the spirit? And there was something that came to my mind. So let me quickly share it, and I'll round off here. Then we'll continue next week. Amen. This is our job. I've learned from Pastor Kingsley Okonkwo that our job is an internal job, so you don't have to finish a sermon in one day. So we can. We can stop somewhere and continue. But I want to say something, especially for married people. Um, it came as, an, as something in my mind. Because sometimes, because of the nature of the prophetic office that, I, that I'm in, instructions come into my spirit like that. And God starts to show me something. So I found out that for married people, most of the time we don't consider X-rated Movies and when I say X-rated movies, movies that have probably sexual scenes and all that, we don't consider it as something that you should avoid. So since you are married, if you watch something ex- something like that, your wife is there, your husband is there. So if anything does you, you can go and quickly know how to release the tension. Amen. But please let me remove the reverb. Okay. So. But the thing is this, most of those movies that have those things, if you check it properly, they are promoting something. They are promoting either adultery or fornication or premarital sex or homosexuality. Those four things. What you don't know is that those things are actually spirits. I don't usually talk like this, you know. I don't, I don't like to sound, <laughs> but it's the, it's the truth now. Those things are spirits, and you don't know when it can get to a measure where those things, even when you see it in your own social space, it doesn't disgust your soul anymore. You have now created a justification for it. So, and that's really the the, 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 the essence of those movies. If you check it, most of the movies that you see now, they are selling homosexuality in a strong way. They will not show it at the beginning. They will make you like the character. Though you would have fallen in love with that character. Then they will just show you that he's a guy with a guy. Or a girl with a girl. Ah, it should not be painful. You say, why? Out, out of all these f- nice things, see what they now used to spoil this movie. But you are watching it too. So after a while, you become comfortable with unrighteousness. And your judgment is now seared. So if you find yourself in those, places, those kind of things and you engage these kind of things, it's important. Or else, you will not know where as a married person, the thought of adultery does not does not irritate you. 
they would just justify it as ah, maybe the husband was not around for so long or just two months, the wife was not around. So it just becomes why you don't know that something has been selling something to your mind. Those things that you have been watching have been selling something to your mind, and you have not taken time to plead the blood. So you have to be conscious. So if you go to the movies and watch something and you feel that this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing is not part of the kingdom culture. When you pray, make sure that you delete those things in your mind. Or else it can become an expectation you have concerning your spouse that you will not voice. You watch the movie and the guy opened the door for the woman, but your husband doesn't. That becomes a problem in your own mind. And your husband is paying the children's school fees, paying the bills. You don't you no longer see that one anymore. It's the fact that he did not open the door. That becomes the romantic thing. Eh? Abby? Yeah. And you don't know that it was because you were mirror something, something was telling you. Something was and you were feeding yourself with that thing so much that something that's supposed to be small now becomes the big thing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We can close here. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word in the name of Jesus. Oh, we are cleansed by your word. We are renewed by your word. We are transformed by your word. Father, we ask that you pour out on us the spirit of prayer and intercession and grace. Where every moment we are conscious of you, we are talking to you. Thank you, God. Your word impacts us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, if you're going to put hashtag for this week, put gist with God. That's, so, let's cultivate gisting with God. See, gist. When I say gist, very, very simple. You just ah, say, God, in the morning, thank you for this morning. And you just think about it. I was lying on the bed. And that's part of your gist too. And to your soul, it's like, what nonsense are you saying? What's the essence of this, this, and you're going through every moment, and like, ah, I was even able to wake up this morning, and there was no pain, I didn't feel any pain, thank you, Jesus, so, and you're just rehearsing all that, before you know it, one hour is gone, you're just in thanksgiving, just looking at it, ah, I was supposed to give that person a piece of my mind, you held my tongue, Holy Spirit, it was you, you know me now, <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs>